everybody likes salsa, but most of us, when we think of salsa, we think of either tomatoes or tomatillos, but you can make salsa out of so many other things too. So today I'm making a peach mango salsa, and we're gonna start with two cups of fresh peaches. Now, fresh vegetables here are definitely gonna be the way you wanna go. Uh, they're gonna give you a lot more flavor if it was dead winter and you just had frozen, maybe, but right now, I'll definitely go with the fresh. So we're gonna dice them up so they'd be about the size that you would want on a chip or a little biteful, because we're mixing it with lots of other things too. Then I have one mango, did the same thing here, uh, got it off the pit and uh, diced it up, very pretty and very nice. Now one of the things that I want you to do as you're doing this kind of thing is think about the flavors of the foods that you're putting in. So don't just say, oh it's two peaches and pick up two peaches, slice and dice and put them in. Make sure you take time to smell that peach, taste that peach, make sure that it, it's, is it sweet, is it tart, uh, is it overripe, is it too soft, because you can adjust recipes to deal with several of those things, uh, but not if you don't know what you're working with. So always taste these ingredients. If it's safe to eat, then you should taste it before you put it in. Also gonna put in uh, one jalapeno pepper, and you can adjust heat here by ramping up the heat on this, or you can take it down by swipping, switching to a milder flavored pepper. I've got a half a cup of diced red onion. And I'm trying to get them all, as you're doing these dice, try to get them all about the same size. I know the peaches and the uh, uh, mangoes are larger, but the rest of it, it's kind of nice if they're a similar size. And then again, a half a cup of red uh, bell pepper. And again, we want color. We eat with our eyes as much as we do with our mouths and our noses. So uh, look for ways to get contrasting colors, contrasting textures as you're doing this. I've got a fourth of a cup of cilantro. If you're not a cilantro person, I understand. Uh, you could use flat leaf parsley if you chose. You could use basil uh, if you would rather. And then also to this, I'm gonna add one or two cloves of garlic depending on their size and your like of garlic. Three tablespoons of fresh lemon juice. Now this could be lime juice. If you've got limes in the kitchen, feel free to use them. Remember to taste it as you add it, however. Limes and lemons don't always have the same strength. Some are sweeter. So uh, before you stir it in, taste it, see if it's exceptionally tart. And then as you stir it in, taste it and see if it's, if it's the point where you want it to be. Do I need less lime juice before you stir it all in? Also gonna add a half a teaspoon of black pepper and a half a teaspoon of kosher salt. Now we want the flavors on this to blend together. So what you would do if you had uh, if you were doing this at home and had plenty of time, would be to cover it and let it set for at least 30 minutes. If you're going to let give it the 30 minutes set, then it doesn't have to be in the refrigerator. If you're going to leave it longer than that, uh, you're going to want to uh, put it in the refrigerator. Keep in mind that some of these ingredients, we put in uh, some acid to help keep the uh, peaches from turning dark. If you want to cut them up ahead of time, you can put a little bit of that lemon juice or lime juice on the peach. Uh, cover it tightly and put it in the refrigerator so that you can come in and, and mix it up closer to, to the time you're going to want it. We'll assume 30 minutes have now transpired. And I've got one avocado. And this gives it a creaminess. Again, we're looking for those contrasts in flavors and contrasts in texture. This also gives it some healthy fats. Uh, very often we say all fats are bad. Avocados do definitely don't fall in that category. You might want to let this one set just a little while before you actually uh, go ahead and serve it. Often salsa, bowl of chips, nothing wrong with that. Um, but today we're going to do something a little bit different. I've got a piece of fish and we're going to put some of this great salsa over a piece of fish. You could also put it over uh, chicken or pork. Uh, so there's lots of things that you can do with this that don't in involve any kind of a tortilla. I hope you'll give this one a try. It's peach and mango salsa for Oklahoma Gardening. I'm Barbara Brown. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.